Welcome back to another video and again this is going to be an inventory series video so we refreshed our regular inventory in the previous video. In today's video well uh, we are going to refresh the interactables so like for example our store I'm going to show this only for the store but you can apply the, exactly the same principle for all the other interactables as well. So if we now sell an item it instantly will refresh all the widgets for all the other characters as well. If we walk away you will see that it does not refresh anything else. If we like for example open up our what is this crafting it will only refresh the widgets for those players who are interacting at that point with that specific object and it's going to do it instantly as soon as we sell something. So let's get started. So the first thing that we will need to locate is our AI interactions interface because well we are going to need to store the, all the players references that are going to interact with those specific objects. Uh, so let's go ahead let's open up our AI interaction and let's set up a function over here. So let's click new let's add a function and I'm going to call this store players. So this is essentially going to grab the info information about the players characters. It's going to store their references and we're going to be able to refresh the uh, widgets for the players who are interacting with that specific object. So we're going to need a couple of inputs. So the first one is the uh, let's call this intera interactable and this one needs to be the actor type. So this is going to be the shop chest or whatever crafting bench whatever that we are interacting with. The next one is going to be, I'm going to call this add, and this is going to boolean. And this basically is going to represent whether we need to store the player's reference or we need to remove one since the player has walked away from that specific interactable and no longer that widget needs to be refreshed for that specific player. And the last one is the player itself. So that's going to be the player. And in my case, this is the third person character reference. Here we go. So we have the interface set up. We can now close it off. So this uh, interaction interface is available basically for all the interactables. So our shop, our crafting table, all that stuff. So first, real quick, let's set up the third person character part. Because, well, we need to do some adjustments over here as well. And then the last thing that we're going to do is we're going to make the adjustments for the actual actors themselves. I'm not going to do it for all of them. So you might have to do it for a couple of more of them. But I'm going to do for a couple uh, just so you know what we need to do. So the first thing that I'm going to change a little bit is the refresh inventory widget function. And what we are going to do over here is we're going to grab all this code and we're going to move it back a little bit. Because before we actually will do the refreshing, we're going to make sure to check if the character's uh, UI is open. So let's look for a variable called is a UI open. And let's do an if branch on that one. Because if the UI is not open, we don't need to refresh it. So we're going to only refresh it if it is open. One more thing that I want to do, just, just to be safe, is grab this event right here and change its replication rule to run on owning client only. So it runs only for that specific client. So it wouldn't, uh, for some reason, decide to run on everybody's machines. So uh, that's it for this one right here. Now, the next one would be... Uh, we need to adjust the I key event as well because we will need to remove some of the some of these references that we are storing and we will stop interacting. We can stop interacting using two methods. We can pr press keyboard key I that is closing our widget and also another option is to press E as in interacting with the, uh, with the interactable again and that will reset it also. So we're going to need to remove those references from these. Uh, but before we can actually do that, we need to set up a server event, which we are going to be running over here. So let's go ahead, let's create ourselves a new custom event and let's call this server store players. And let's make this run on server. There we go. So we have that. And then from here, we can run our interface called store players message. Here we go. So this is the event that we created in our AI interactions interface. And now let's connect our interactable, connect the add and connect the player. Here we go. And that's all that we need to, to basically run over here. So that's going to be good. So now we can use this to add or remove the references. Now let's adjust the I key event, like I said. 
So the first thing again is just like we did for the refresh inventory widget. First, let's do an if branch check to check whether the UI is open so that we know what exactly we need to do. Now, if the UI is not open, if this is false, then we want to proceed with the code that we already have. So the create widget one. So let's just bring it down to false. Now on the true route though, we're going to do something different. We are going to run our remove widget function like so. And then after that, we're going to run our newly created event. So we're going to run the server store players. So we need to provide the variable. So we need the interactable. So let's provide the interactable variable so that we know which actor we are interacting with so that it would remove the reference from that. The add needs to be false on this one. Since we are not adding, we are removing. And the player's reference is the self. Now, since this is the server event, it's going to take a, a couple of milliseconds to, to run this code, depending on the ping and such. So it is a good idea to then at the end also set the interactable over here on the local space to just be empty. So don't set anything in it, just set the variable and leave it empty. And it's going to reset it locally because, well, this IT event is a local event. So for the character itself, it's going to instantly say, hey, the interactable is no longer valid. And uh, yeah, that's exactly what we want to do. So this is all good in the third person character. So make sure you set all of this thing up. And uh, now this gave me some kind of an error. Yeah, so I made a small mistake. So reconnect the interactable to the target recompile it, double click this and actually remove that variable. I made a small mistake. We didn't even need that because obviously we need the target. So that's the default value. So all we need is just two values. We need add and we need the player. So that's it. So go back, recompile this once more, just in case. So now this is all good. There we go. So we have set up the location where we need to remove the player's reference. Now we also got to make sure that we set the player's reference in those interactables as well. And we're going to do that inside of our create widget function. So at the end over here, what we are simply going to do is we're going to run our server store store players. There we go. Now for the interactable, we can use the interactable variable. So we can run this. There we go. For the add, we want to make sure that this is true. And for the player, we got to provide the self-reference. So this specific player. So the next thing is now we got to uh, do these things in the actors themselves. So let's start off with the AI shop. Let's open this one up. So let's start off by storing the values and removing them. So let's run that thing right here real quick. So the first thing that we need is so we created the interface store players. So let's run that. So let's look for the event store players. So there we go. If you don't have it in some of your interactables, then that means that in the class defaults, in the class settings rather, uh, you don't have the AI interaction uh, interface attached to that. So make sure you attach it or run any other interface that you might have. And so what we're going to do from over here, we're going to do an if first to see if we need to add or we need to remove. Now, if this is true, then that means, well, we need to add. So for that, let's create ourselves a variable and let's call this players. Let's make this into the third person character reference and an array. Also, let's make sure to replicate this so that because this is going to be ran, the refreshing is going to be ran on server. So we got to make sure uh, that everybody knows the players. So then the next thing is to grab the players variable and we want to get it. And from it, we want to add like so. So we're going to do that on the true route. And what we are going to add is we are going to add our players reference. So we're going to plug that into here. And now this is going to add the player uh, to the players uh, array. There we go. So that's for the adding quick and simple. Now for the other one, now for the removing again, let's grab our players reference. Uh, well, the players array rather. And from here, we want to do, do a loop, but we want to do a reverse loop for each. That is a little bit better uh, when it comes to removing indexes. It's always better to run the reverse one when we are removing the indexes. Otherwise, well, some of the things might glitch out a little bit. Uh, the loop is going to go bad because we're going to room, remove a specific index. And the last index that it's going to go through the loop is not no longer going to be existing, basically. So the next thing that we want to do is from the arrays element, we want to check if that one is equal to the player's reference that we are providing from the inputs. So let's plug that in as well. There we go. And then in the loops body, we want to do a if branch check and connect this like so. And if that is true, then we want to grab our players array and we want to remove an index. And that is going to remove a specific player that it has found in the array. Now the index needs to be the array index 
from the loop. So this is the function that is going to add and remove players from the memory of that specific actor. Now you will need to copy and paste this whole thing into all the other actors that uh, have like this, that you want to refresh the widget for, like the chests, uh, crafting benches, all that stuff. Now we have done this. The next one would be changing up the start interaction. Like I said, we can stop interacting uh, with these actors with two keys. We can use the I key and we can also use the interaction that I have on the E key. So this is where we start to interact. So from here, we're going to want to do a couple of adjustments. So what I'm going to do is actually bring this down a little bit. And let's go ahead and first let's do a real quick if branch check again, just like we did previously in our third person character over here, because from the player, we want to get the is UI open and connect that to the branch like so. Now, the code that we had previously over here, we want to run through the false branch, just like we did in the I key event. So if the UI is not open, if it's false, then we want to go ahead and open that up. Now I'm going to do some quick rerouting over here, just so that it is a little bit better visible. So something like that will do the trick. There we go. And now we need to work on the true route. So again, let's do some rerouting from the player's reference because we're going to need a couple of functions from the player. So the first one is the remove widget. So it's very similar to what we did on the iKey event. If the widget is already is the UI open, then we are going to remove the widget from our screens. And then the next thing is again from the third person character, we want to run the server store players custom event like so. Here we go. Now for the interactable, we want to use the self reference because we are removing the uh, the player's reference from this specific actor. So the interactable is going to be the self. Add is going to be false since we are removing and the player is well the same one that we use for the target. So basically uh, this specific player that is interacting. And then at the end of it again just like previously since this is a local uh, interaction event we are going to run our set interactable and we are going to set that to basically nothing. So we just leave it empty and it simply removes it from the reference. There we go. So again, the same adjustments will need to be made in all the other ones, the crafting bench and all that stuff. So the interaction is changed to the way it needs to be. And now we got to make sure that it actually does run the refreshing code for us. Now, what we are going to do is we're going to set up a rep notify. And so select your inventory variable and make sure you change its replication rule from replicated to rep notify. So what this is going to do is essentially whenever the variable gets changed on the server side, it's going to run a specific code and it's going to run this specific code on our newly created function on rep uh, inventory. So that gets created automatically whenever you change the replication rule to rep notify. So now over here, what we are going to do is we're going to grab our players. So all the players that are interacting with the with the store in this situation, we're going to do a loop for each. And from here, we are simply going to from the arrays element. So basically from the player, we are going to refresh the inventory widget. Now for the position, make sure you provide shop in this case, since this is my shop. And that's the position that needs to be provided. Now, if it's been a while, you don't know your positions, just go ahead, open up your UI inventory graph. And we have a switch pretty much at the beginning, close to the beginning with all the positions over here. Now, first three inventory player and equipment are going to bring you to the same one, as you can see from the executions. But the shop chest and crafting is going to bring you to a different one and make sure you provide the correct one because, well, the variable does use this position. So if you provide a chest for the store, it might glitch some of the things out. So make sure you provide the correct one from this switch. There we go. Uh, so everything is ready to go. So I'm going to test this with two clients. So I have two clients over here, no server character. Let's interact with the store with one player and with the other one. So let's drag in an item, let's sell it. And as you can see, instantly it refreshed it for the other one as well. So we can sell more. So it should be three, four, and it should be five. There we go. As you can see, that is five. And now when we ever sell all of these, it should be at eight. 
and it is at 8. So now you will need to do the same thing for all the other ones that might have some kind of a storage or whatever that needs to be replicated and everybody needs to see that, uh, the, the things that are inside of it. So what you simply want to do is open up that actor. You want to again set up the rep notify for the inventory variable and provide this code right here. And then in the event graph, make sure you, you can just simply copy and paste this whole entire thing, promote this to a variable and then also make the changes for the start interaction and everything will be running just fine. So now real quick before we end this video, let's make some tiny tiny adjustments in the third person character because well, uh, some of you might have an issue that the widgets are a little bit flickering whenever they are refreshing and that is because of this delay. So a long time ago I said I will come back to this and fix this. Well, it's been quite a while, but now we are able to fix this because well, we have all this other functionality and we added this uh, delay only because well of the latency issues when it comes to moving items to other objects. Now because of the rep notify, that issue is gone. So uh, let's do those adjustments. So the first one is in the refresh inventory widget event inside of our third person character. We can grab this delay and just simply delete that, reconnect these pins, and then we need to go to our create widget. And over here at the very beginning, we have a branch check which checks whether the UI is visible. Instead of that, I'm going to remove that. And instead of it, I'm going to use the is UI open value instead. So let's plug that in. And there we go. So we are good with this thing right here. Now we have one more location that we need to adjust, which is in our UI. And that is in our confirm by widget. Let's go to the graph. And here it is. Here we have the refresh widget thing right here, the custom event. So over here, what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to remove the delay. And I'm also going to remove this branch check for the is UI open because we are already running this check in the refresh widget and also in the create widget. So we really don't no longer need that. Now I'm gonna reconnect some of these to make them a little bit shorter like so. But other than that, uh, everything is just fine. So just remove the delay and also the branch. And now we should be good to go and there should be no flickerings whatsoever. So now if we move some items around as you can see, no flickering whatsoever. And also when we interact with this guy right here, we can sell the items and this is all good. Now there are a little bit of a movement that is because of the scroll box. Uh, and that is because, well, these are generated one by one. So that's why it looks a little bit odd, but that's the only part that is moving. That is because, well, we are generating these slots and at the beginning there is no scroll bar uh, because there's plenty of space, but later there's not enough space and it appears on our screens. So yeah, that's going to be it for today's episode. Hope you found this useful. If you did, make sure to subscribe and uh, yeah, see you in the next one.